Horizon. Not according to our clock up there. It's time to call our meeting to a roll call. Commissioner. To order with a roll call. Commissioner Patton. Here. Commissioner Barwick. Here. Commissioner Webb. Here. Commissioner Stecklin. Here. Mayor Absher. Here. Would you all join me for the Pledge of Allegiance? To the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Okay, item number four on the agenda is our public comments and audience to visitors section. This is the opportunity for anybody who'd like to speak to the council. To do so uh, in public forum, subject to uh, ordinance 3128 and 3144, both of which govern this section of the meeting. Would anybody like to speak to the council? Anybody on the phone? We do have someone on the phone. Are there any comments to the council? Okay, seeing none, we'll move on to the consent agenda. And before we act on that, we have items A through D. Would anybody from the council like item A, th B, C, or D removed from the consent agenda before we vote on those? Anybody from the audience like any of those four items voted on separately? Okay, if not, we would entertain a motion to pass the consent agenda. I'd make a motion that we would accept the consent agenda as given. I'll second. Okay, roll call, please. Commissioner Patton. Yay. Commissioner Barwick. Yay. Commissioner Webb. Yay. Commissioner Stecklin. Yay. Mayor Absher. Yay. And before we go on to new business, item number six, the commander from the VFW has a presentation to make, and I believe it's to the chief of police and his department. So, Chief Fitz, would you mind coming up? Would you mind going up to the microphone so you can read that, just so it's on the record? Yes, thank you, Mr. Mayor and Council. My name is Bill Hatfield. I'm the commander of VFW Post 1301 here in Marion, Illinois. And I'd like to present a certificate of appreciation from the Veterans of Foreign Wars of the United States to Chief David Fitz in grateful recognition of unyielding adherence to the highest ideas of law enforcement in maintaining, preserving, and protection of lawful rights of all citizens. We wish to present this certificate of, achieve, of appreciation because in this climate of all this hate and discontent toward first responders and police officers, we as members of the Veterans of Foreign Wars would like to thank you all for everything you do for our safety and and continuing to do what you do every day why and how i don't know but i'd like to present you this certificate of appreciation all right thank you i don't know exactly what we did to deserve this but we will, I will graciously accept it on behalf of all of the men and women of the PD. Thank you, sir. He's gone. Yeah, he's. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, item number six under community programs. Um, Allison Hassler is going to talk to us about this idea, which I think is in your packet. I wasn't sure, so I went ahead. Won't you? Uh, if you don't mind, if you've got an extra copy of that, I don't, we have to give it to a press member here, and there may be an extra copy can circulate just because pe people might want to see what we're talking about there. You guys do have a copy in your packet, do you not? Yes. yes. There was or is this something new? Printed out one additional piece oh, okay. about the alleyways. Um, Council. Um, so I wanted to start with a program that I am proposing <clears throat> called Destination Alleyways. That is the one that you didn't already have in your packet. And before I start this, the talking points, I want to say something very clear that this is going to be a grant proposal. So money um, 
is going to be hopefully awarded for this program. So what I wanted to start with this one is that because we have a perception of um, the not enough parking in the downtown area, this perception, and I say perception because we have over 700, I believe, in the downtown area, it does catapult when we have our Civic Center in full capacity. Um, so I want to take that piece of it out for a minute and just talk about when we have regular business hours in the evenings when we have events and things like that. Um, there's a lot of other reasons why those public parking spaces are not used. Uh, one of them is because they're not easily seen when you're walk, walking or driving around the, uh, the Tower Square Plaza. But the other one is that it's really not conducive for walking through the alleyways, alleyways as they are right now, especially in the night. So my proposal is that instead of just having those alleyways as a conduit to point A to point B, is that they're actually part of the destination themselves. So my proposal, kind of generic, but called Destination Alleyways. And this proposal is to take the four main arteries on the quadrants and use art and creative placemaking for um, a safe, attractive, and traffic calming passageway for the communities to enjoy. So this proposal includes, and you can see this on your packet, um, lighting, um, very specifically the vintage string lights as demonstrated as part of the project, um, the Marion Downtown Revitalization Plan. So taking a little piece of that really big pie and concentrating on the alley specifically. Uh, green space and vegetation, so using greenery, planters, we don't want to take up any more space for vehicles, so these would be hanging, kind of like hanging gardens in the, in the alleyway. And then asphalt art, which I showed, that's kind of a hard, hard to describe if you haven't actually seen the asphalt art that I'm talking about. So I've included some of those examples in that, um, in that portfolio there. So this program would create a space where they go from something that is often ignored and shunned and avoided to a place that people want to come to as part of the downtown experience. And this again is going to be a grant that we're proposing uh, that's due at the end of this week. So that will be going on. Uh, the next piece of this is the part that I wanted to talk to you about and that was on the agenda, which is the broader community asphalt program. So I've looked at a lot of case studies from around the United States of very successful programs where they use art as traffic calming measures in crosswalks, in busy street intersections, as well as even on utility poles and utility boxes and places that you don't expect art to be as a place to have a community engaged in showing their own culture and neighborhood and making a really um, a great space for them to enjoy and take ownership of. So I've included the process of what that would look like and some of the questions that I um, suspected that you would have and that would include how much it would cost the city and things like that and really what this would be is a community driven, a true community driven program where we would not be supplying the materials but we would be supplying the permit for the street to utilize the street for that semi-permanent art installation, um, traffic cones and safety barricades through the street department so they can carefully implement this program as well as a, um, a process for us to overview and approve either with modifications or without modifications the installation itself so that there's um, a little bit of overs oversight with the program. So does anybody have any questions? I know that was a lot of spillage. <laughs> I have a, just a short one. Yeah. This is not just gonna be limited to Tower Square, or is it gonna be limited just to Tower Square? Area? So I started with Tower Square as kind of this centralized location of where we'll do the, inst the 
the start of the asphalt installations or the asphalt art installations and then it would be for the broader community so if there's a neighborhood that say has a lot of children on that street and there's a lot of traffic that goes through there they can create some traffic calming measures through our installations on the street themselves so these plans for the art would be approved i guess by someone i guess yeah so we would probably have a small committee i don't think there would be a reason to warrant a really large committee but it would probably include myself um, probably the director of the civic center just knowing that how to implement those sort of things and if you'd need to be in for any kind of technical um, technical questions and then really anybody else that would want to be part of it <laughs> i love the idea of lighting up the alleys right away because if you saw what happened in uh Fosse park you know, we had some defamation on a good mural out there and I would hate for that to happen. I mean, not that lighting will stop it, but it will sure deter it. So the quicker we can get that up, the better. So I think for the most part, I know it says discuss and approve, but I don't know that I envision necessarily us having to approve this. I just wanted you guys to all be aware of what she's working on, amongst other things, but kind of what's coming so that you're not caught uh, should we get especially the grant. Mm -hmm. um, and kind of what Commissioner Steckland just said, this process of revitaling, revitalizing downtown will also be dependent on grants, but there are some pieces of it that we can go ahead and do that don't take years to do, and lighting up the alleyways, as you said, is just a, a quick and easy uh, thing, literally, of turning what I think has been, to some degree, maybe, our Achilles heel in the past and making it an, an attractive on ramp, if you will, to the square from these parking areas. So still lots of work to do, but I, I think as we find these little pieces of this bigger project to do that we can go ahead and do, I would hope that you guys would encourage us to go down that path. So I think that's mainly what she's talking about here is getting started. But if that's, I guess we can vote on whether this is okay or not, but is, is, is that, uh, is that necessary? Is that what you guys have? Gosh, I can't even keep from hitting this thing. <laughs> Terrence, you fixed it and got it in the way. <laughs> uh, anybody have an issue or questions of moving this way or you don't want to go this way? Or? No, I think it's great. I think so, too. Okay. I'll make a motion to approve the asphalt art program. I second that. Third that. <clears throat> There's only me left. Oh, yeah, and Doug. Okay, roll call, please. Commissioner Patton. Yeah. Commissioner Barwick. Yay. Commissioner Webb. Yay. Commissioner Stecklin. Yay. Mayor Absher. Yay. Thank you, Allison. Thank you, Council. Okay. Chief, you're up. Yes, sir. We talked about buying some police cars last time. I think this is the ordinance that finances them, correct, uh, Steve? So. Uh, I don't know what else there is to discuss there. What is the uh, similar terms and interest rate that you've gotten before on these, I take it? Yeah. Okay. You have anything to add to that? No, sir. I'm Okay. Three of us are going to Chesterfield Wednesday to pick them up. Okay, so we better approve this, huh? Yeah, that's correct. <laughs> <laughs> you want to do make it? a motion that we would approve ordinance number 36 Six six authorizing the city of Marion, Williamson County, Illinois, to enter into a loan agreement with First Southern Bank to purchase police cars and equipment. Second that. Okay, roll call, please. Commissioner Patton. Yay. Commissioner Barwick. Yay. Commissioner Webb. Yay. Commissioner Stecklin. Yay. Mayor Absher. Yay. And you have a couple of uh, higher recommendations. It looks like for part-time dispatchers. You want to tell us about them? Yes, sir. Um, we had two openings for a part-time dispatcher. We held interviews a couple weeks ago. We had five interviewees. They all did very, very well. So I feel pretty good about the uh, applicant pool that we had. And the <coughs> dispatch team leads, along with myself and ch Assistant Chief Morrill, have settled on A.J. Seegers and Tyson Smith. Both are lifelong residents of Marion. Gentlemen, 
Be careful what you wish for. You have no idea how difficult a dispatcher's job really is. <laughs> okay, uh, Commissioner Barber, do you, since this is your apartment, you want to read this motion, please? Yes, I make a motion that we would approve the recommendation of the chief to hire Tyson Smith and Aiden Seegers, each to the position of part-time dispatcher at the training pay rate of twenty-one forty-seven per hour, increasing to twenty-two sixty-six per hour upon completion of training. Second that. Okay, roll call, please. Commissioner Patton. Yay. Commissioner Barwick. Yay. Commissioner Webb. Yay. Commissioner Stecklin. Yay. Mayor Absher. Yay. Mayor and Council, this is Aiden Seegers. This is Tyson Smith. Welcome aboard. Welcome. You may know Tyson's father, Robbie. He's the pastor of Redemption Church. Aiden's father is Brad, teacher at Marion Lincoln School. Well, should we run the gauntlet or, or we're just going to go I'll introduce or go that? And we'll go to shaking hands. We'll okay. Commissioner Stecklin, from there. Commissioner Webb, Mayor okay. Absher, Commissioner Barwick, and that is Tammy Beasley, Marion City Clerk, and Commissioner Patton is talking to us via the phone tonight. Yeah, we're glad to have you both, guys. They start tomorrow. Congratulations. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you. The rest, the rest of you are wanting to leave, aren't you? I got to go back to work. So. Uh -huh. <laughs> you You're all welcome to leave if you like. Okay, under item eight, we have looks like five items on the agenda. Um, Glenn. You want to come up in, in case we've got questions on any of these here? 8A is so we have opportunities with SIMPO. I don't know that everybody on council knows exactly what SIMPO is and how so that works. Illinois Metropolitan Organization Planning. Okay. So this is a uh, just make it as simple as I know how, this has to do with a, a $964,000 grant that we're applying for that would uh, basically of our local share on all the improvements that we've contemplated around the square, should we get this, this would be that much less that the taxpayer has to pay. We get an 80-20 grant. Yeah. Uh, the federal government gives 80%, uh, Mary goes 20%. The resolution you're passing states that the council has the 20% to be able to proceed on with the application is the purpose of it. So those federal funds aren't guaranteed, but we're so we're competing against. We're 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 set for the calendar year of 2023, I believe, under this grant. Okay. If we get it. If we get it, there's no guarantee that we're getting it. Okay. If we don't pass the resolution, we won't get it. <laughs> so uh, we think we have a good chance. And Glenn, do we have to do we have to specify? Which projects are just that we're going to use for these projects? These we it's it's loosely defined in the first application. Okay, that's correct. But these are the items that qualify as eligible for grant. Right. So we put the whole package together. Any more questions? Now that's my motion that we adopt resolution 2020-56, a commitment of local funds for local roadway improvements, including construction of new pavement, sidewalks, crosswalks, curb and gutter, ADA ramps, pavement striping, and miscellaneous improvements. I'll second. Roll call, please. Commissioner Patton. Yes. Commissioner Barwick. Yay. Commissioner Webb. Yay. Commissioner Stecklin. Yay. Mayor Absher. Yay. Item 8B is an ordinance for refunding, which is um, refinancing for the rest of the world to save some money on these uh, bonds. I would make that motion. Anytime we can save money is a great thing. So I'd make a motion to approve Ordinance 3667, providing for the issuance of general obligation bonds of the City of Marion, Williamson County, Illinois, in an aggregate principal amount of $902,000 for the purpose of refunding certain outstanding general obligation bonds of the city and paying costs related to the issuance of such bonds and authorizing the levy of a direct annual tax sufficient to pay the principal and interest on said bonds. I would second that. Any questions? No call, please. Commissioner Patton. Yay. Commissioner Barwick. Yay. Commissioner Webb. Yay. Commissioner Stecklin. Yay. Mayor Absher. Yay. 
Item 8C is Ordinance 3668. This has to do with the uh, our local portion of the, uh, we got a $2 million grant for a $3.2 million water tower project. I'm rounding those numbers in both cases, I believe, but this is the uh, ordinance adopting the U.S. Bancorp financing agreement. I think it's a lease agreement, technically. What's, why do we, why is it a lease agreement versus regular structure? That's what they offer and, uh, and use it and it's, in substance, it's really the, you know, the same. It's just how they, uh, how they do it, so it, it falls under their tax exempt. Okay. Is that why we're, the, how they get to that low interest rate is that way? I would again make a motion to approve Ordinance 3668, authorizing the City of Mary Williamson County, Illinois, to enter into a lease agreement with U.S. Bank Corp. Governmental Leasing and Finance, here known as USBGLF. I would second that. Okay, roll call, please. Commissioner Patton. Yay. Commissioner Barwick. Yay. Commissioner Webb. Yay. Commissioner Stecklin. Yay. Mayor Absher. Okay, item 8D. I'll make a motion to approve ordinance 3669, which is a redevelopment agreement with Crown Brew LLC. Second that motion. Okay, roll call please. Commissioner Patton. Yay. Commissioner Barwick. Yay. Commissioner Webb. Yay. Commissioner Stecklin. Yay. Mayor Absher. Yay. Uh, for the record, we failed I failed to have this verbiage it's actually item E is ordinance 3670 and that's for the record make sure we're passing ordinance 3670 for this professional services agreement in item 80 well, since I said that I'll just go ahead and make the rest of the motion I approve I make the motion that we approve ordinance 3670 which is the execution of a professional services agreement with Jacobson Klein LTD and the economic Development group. Second. Okay. Um, roll call, please. Commissioner Patton. Yay. Commissioner Barwick. Yay. Commissioner Webb. Yay. Commissioner Stecklin. Yay. Mayor Absher. Yay. Item 9A, do you want to speak to this, Cody? So this is one of these annual um, insurance renewals we have to do. This one was is ICRMT, which is our Property and liability. Property and liability. Yeah, it was actually a pretty good rate. I think it ended up being just uh, right at 3% increase um, from, from last year. Uh, we've been happy with their service this year, um, in the last year, um, and would recommend the passage and, and um, re-upping our, our renewal with ICRMT. One question. Okay. I'm assuming all of the coverages were the same as last year. And yeah. Forgive me about this. Where's our cyber coverage covered under? It's a separate policy. Totally separate? Yeah, totally okay. separate. There's, there there is sure some covered under there, but but there is a separate cyber policy. Okay. Yep. It renews it, I believe, in May. All right. I'd make a motion to approve the ICRMT liability insurance renewal. I would second that motion. Okay, roll call, please. Commissioner Patton. Yay. Commissioner Barwick. Yay. Commissioner Webb. Yay. Commissioner Stecklin. Yay. Mayor Absher. Yay. Under Commissioner Reports, Commissioner Webb, do you have a report? Yeah, uh, Street Department's been working on cleaning some ditches. Uh, the fall rain's coming on. We're kind of out across from the hospital right now, uh, working on in behind the Veterans Building there. So. Uh, also continuing work on pouring the sidewalks, uh, uh, leaf removal. We, we bought a new machine last year that helps uh, uh, vacuum up the leaves. So uh, we've been getting it tuned up, getting it ready, because we're getting ready to have a bunch of leaves hit the road. So uh, with that, that's all I have. Uh, Mr. Patton, do you have a report? No, I don't have a report. Okay. Mr. Stecklin? Okay. Uh, mine's... Okay, I had uh, one new service tap this month, four water leaks, five services were updated. 
Uh, we're continuing to flush the whole distribution system. It's been going great. Uh, working on the landscaping, pouring concrete from the prior leaks. Uh, the two new high service pumps have been installed at the plant and are working. Uh, again, we used just shy of 58 million gallons of water for the month of September, so 1.9 million gallons a day. Um, I got a little trivia for you. Since oh. the last of the month. I know you've been waiting. Thank trivia. you all for the emails and cards and letters, but <laughs> here they are. And I've actually got two because one kind of, I, I, anyway, you'll get this. Uh, can, this is a question. Can you guess how tall the water tower is next to the water plant? Glenn, you cannot answer this question. Ooh. Is there a prize? There's no prize. Oh, Just feel good yeah. about yourself. But. I don't need it. All right. Any guesses? 165 feet. You've been talking to Glenn. 167 feet. That's There's pretty a good. Light on the top now. But I don't, yeah, so uh, they not only supply water storage, they keep the water pressure in the water mains. So depending on the height, uh, the elevation of the tires is the is determining factor of the water pressure. So that's, that's good. So that's one. Now, your, your big trivia. Okay, this is uh, what's called the, Marion used to have a thing called the city scavenger, okay? And uh, was this an actual city appointed job? And the answer is true. It was actually appointed by the city of Marion. It was an appointed position according to Marion's laws and ordinances for the year of 1919. This person did not collect a salary from the city but rather controlled the garbage and waste collection throughout the city and was able to receive fees for doing such. Section 3 of Ordinance 30 reads, It shall be unlawful for any other person except the duly authorized city scavenger or his or her agents to haul night soil, dry garbage, cans, offal, or any other rubbish, or do any other scavenger work within the city of Marion. Just to be clear, the vast majority of buildings in 1919 did not have sewer connections and would have utilized outhouses that required cleaning out, many times at night, using buckets, which is what night soil referred to. By the 1950s, the last of the Marion outhouses were beginning to disappear and commercial trash haulers were beginning to take over the city scavenger's job of trash collection and we're thankful for having a state-of-the-art treatment plant to take care of it today. So there. That's not your motion to bring back that position? It is not my motion. <laughs> and one last thing, I want to say that the Water Department would like to thank Terrence Henry and his IT crew for their ongoing hard work their assistance in the infrastructure and maintaining the meter reading system has undoubtedly saved us manpower hours so we can better serve the public on numerous projects. Their hard work has not only saved manpower, but has henceforth helped Marion's goal of achieving a great meter reading system to better serve the public. Once again, thank you to Terrence and his whole team. Signed, Cliff Hogue, Waterfield Supervisor, Marion Water Department. So thank you, Terrence. That? Great job. That's all I have. Don't forget, uh, trick-or-treating is this week. Be safe and all that good stuff. And next week, what, boat. What time is trick or treating? Four to eight. Four to eight. Four to eight. That's all I have. Okay, Commissioner Barwick. You got anything to beat night soil? Mm. <laughs> well, <laughs> I've got two items to read. <laughs> I want to leave that there. Uh, the first thing is from the, Mar or the uh, Marion Fire Department. Uh, for the month of September, we had a total of 81 incidents uh, there were 10 fire incidents, 15 EMS rescue, 17 hazardous conditions with no fire, 11 service calls, 13 good intent calls, 15 activated alarms for a total of 81. Uh, there were five occupancy permit inspections, 20 annual safety inspections for a total of 25. And I also have a letter here that I'd like to read uh, that was addressed to the mayor. With your permission, I'll read this. This is from Officer Sam Ward. He was involved in a traffic accident on October 16th. And uh, the letter reads, Mayor Absher, as well as what we all know, I was involved in a traffic crash on 10 16 20 while on duty with the Marion Police Department. I write to you today in regards of the actions that followed the traffic crash by my fellow officers, dispatchers, firemen, United EMS crew, and life flight crew. It is my understanding that Marion Dispatch had received emergency 911 calls describing a traffic crash involving a Marion police officer. Marion dispatchers began relaying that information and dispatch, dispatched officers to my location after they did not receive a status check from me over the radio. Marion dispatchers dispatched the Mar Marion Fire Department to my location as well as United EMS. 
Once Soul's crews arrived on scene, a plan was developed to place me on a life flight helicopter. Marion dispatchers dispatched a life flight crew and directed them to land on the Marion Junior High School football field. The task of relaying information from Marion dispatchers to emergency crews in order to rescue me from my vehicle was imperative and a great responsibility. Without dispatch coordinating that information they were being given, I would not have been rescued in the great fashion that I was. Dispatch was nothing short of outstanding this day. Once my fellow officers arrived on scene and came to my aid, I knew I was in good hands. Officer Chris Fosler had opened my driver's side door and began speaking to me as I was starting to regain consciousness. Officer Fosler had explained to me that I had been in a traffic crash and began assessing my injuries. He remained by my side while other officers took control of the scene around us. Officer Fosler stayed by my side until the Marion Fire Department arrived. Officer Fosler relayed the information of my injuries to the fire department and dispatch. During those critical moments of assessing my injuries and developing a plan to rescue me from my squad car, the Marion Fire Department did not falter. The execution of that plan led by Assistant Chief Heidi and his fire crew was nothing short of perfection. There's no other fire crew I would have wanted to be there by my side more than our own Marion Fire Department. The decision was made to cut the driver's side door off my patrol car and with multiple people helping, removed me from my vehicle and placed me on a backboard. I was removed from my vehicle and placed on a backboard and carried by officers and firemen to the United EMS crew that was standing by. United EMS did not hesitate in beginning medical treatment on me once I was in their care. The medical treatment that was given to me by United EMS made me realize how fortunate I was to be in their care. United continued this medical treatment on me and up to the second flight light landed at the junior high. The life flight crew loaded me under their helicopter and continued medical treatment on me until we landed at Evansville Hospital. Mayor Absher, it is my strong belief that the men and women of the Marion Dispatch all Marion police officers on scene, Marion Fire Department, United EMS, and the Life Flight crew be accommodated for their actions on that day. Their actions make the city of Marion and her citizens very proud. I am forever grateful. Thank you for your attention. Patrolman Officer Samuel Ward. I think all those kudos were certainly due to all those parties. And commend them, of course. And it's very—it was a very tense evening, um, not knowing what happened to him. But there's one other set of circumstance I just want to mention on along that. I had two different people text me that night out of the blue. I don't know if I even told you this, Chief, that uh, asked me how the officer was doing. I didn't even know one of them. I didn't have in my phone, so I wasn't sure who I was even talking to. But. The outcome of that conversation was is these were two different churches that told me that they had initiated their prayer chains for the officer. They didn't know which officer it was or um, what the circumstances were. They were just praying for him. And, and the fact that I was able to talk to him and you were that, that evening as his mom and his mother coming back from Evansville, that's not the outcome we thought was going to happen when he left in that helicopter. So uh, there's some other people to thank too in this town that we're praying for him and we appreciate that. Whoever you are and and, and uh, you know who you are, we don't. So anyway, I just wanted to mention that. Anything else to come before the council? Yes, sir. I forgot to mention November 9th, we'll be starting the uh, fall cleanup. Uh, the schedule will be on the website, kind of show the sections of town we're gonna be in. It'll last about two weeks. So starting November 9th. Anything else, gentlemen? Doug, you got anything else? No, I'm good. Thank you, Mayor. Hope to be back next time. Hope so. Okay, if hearing no other things to come before the council, we'd entertain a motion to adjourn. Make a motion to adjourn. Seconds. Okay, roll call, please. Commissioner Patton. Yay. Commissioner Barwick. Yay. Commissioner Webb. Yay. Commissioner Steckland. Yay. Mayor Absher. Yay. Thank you all.